वेलकम टू सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट वीकली मार्केट राउंड अप 26 मई 2018। आई एम सागर नंदी चीफ एनालिस्ट एंड ट्रेडर एट सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट बेस्ट इन सिंगापुर आई विल नॉट टेक टाइम टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो मोर अबाउट मी द कंपनी सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट और मोर इम्पोर्टेंटली हाउ इट मे हेल्प इन योर ट्रेडिंग यू कैन विजिट द वेबसाइट सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट डॉट को एंड क्लिक ऑन द अबाउट मी Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold, the two commodities that tend to impact related stocks. We always try to align our trades with the market's direction. A rising market tends to lift many stocks. We analyze the market's direction using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and technical analysis of the broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market, we like to align them with the industry's rotation as well. Broad market and even sector is too broad to pinpoint the force behind the industries. Industry rotation does a much better job at that. We study industry's rotation using scorecard and heat map. While discussing this top-down analysis, we may look at some of the recent examples from Q Forum or from the social network pages, and also, as usual, try to identify trades for the coming week. I am not much fond of PowerPoints. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodity study using oil. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Together we call this template at a glance template because it helps us identify a low risk swing trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart in short time, usually in 10 seconds or less. Last week price closed on this candle. Generally oil was going up, however last Friday's candle was indecisive, doji like candle and it was also too close to the upper boundary for us to take a low risk swing long trade. This Monday price tried to go up, on Tuesday it displayed the bearish headwind signal and then it sharply fell down. When the bearish headwind signal appeared on Tuesday, the weekly was still bullish. Therefore, we would not like to look for any headwind bearish short setup. Instead, we will just protect our profit in any existing long position using trailing stop. That would be a good idea because during the week, oil fell heavily. Right now oil is already down significantly, it is near the yellow direction line, it is oversold in the daily chart. We can find that out by changing the template. Let me change to the other template which shows the overbought oversold condition. We can use hotkey for that. Whenever an instrument is oversold, these dots start to appear below the candles and when it is overbought, the green dots start to appear. Looking at the red dot below the candle, we know it is already oversold and from the price move itself, we see it has fallen a lot. Therefore, we are not going to try any short trade right now. And it is clearly bearish, so we are not going to try any long trade either. 
let's now move to gold now we are studying gold using the etfg ld we are looking at gold again using the same at a glance template last week in the market roundup i observed that gold had fallen a lot it was already oversold below the lower boundary lines therefore we were not going to try any short trade instead i mentioned that because it was near the trend line support and because the bullish headwind possible reversal sign had come the likely move of gold from there would be upward there was no swing long trade setup i mentioned that day traders could try to look for trades only in the long direction that was appropriate analysis gold went up from there and it is not uncommon whenever an instrument is oversold and is at a support trend line support in this case and because the possible reversal signal had also come it was very likely that gold would move upward during the week that happened it came to the white direction line and also the resistance trend line we would normally expect price to pause at least at those levels and that happened on friday price opened higher but throughout the day it fell we know that from the solid shape of the candle right now in the daily chart gold is in overall downtrend however it is near value area and it is inside a triangle pattern bound by the resistance trend line at the top and support trend line at the bottom these are not convenient areas for taking any swing trade we may wait for gold to break out of the triangle pattern to decide its trend before we take a swing trade the weekly continues to be in magenta color which is bearish that was our analysis of the two commodities using technical charts let's now move to market breadth analysis every week we study market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts because this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly charts this is to be used more for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading over longer term both nasdaq and nyse are in uptrend they are supported by multiple support trend lines and we are observing it for quite a long time they are providing robust support until these supports are broken the longer term charts will continue to be in uptrend looking more closely to the recent weeks we see for three successive weeks nasdaq is closing almost at the same level and the same is true to a large extent for nyse as well if we look more closely we see nasdaq went up this way whereas nyse went down but not by significant amounts as seen from the candle shapes for two successive weeks nyse closed however still it couldn't close below the midway of the large bullish candle prior to that nasdaq is continuing to move up gradually if we look at the internals there is a very mixed picture new high lows for both the indices decline though both of them closed above zero not much above zero very close to zero the other four internals advanced decline and up down volume they also closed near zero some of them went up some of them went down the internals along with the candles show that there is 
not enough conviction in the market either on the bullish side or on the bearish side. This may be a time to be cautious in taking swing trades. Let us see if the market ETFs convey the same information. We are now looking at SPY using at a glance template. Last week I mentioned that though price was going up, the backdrop candle colors were bullish. It was very close to the memory resistance line. The week before that also I had warned about taking any long trend because of the trend line resistance line. For three weeks it is moving sideways on a closing basis. This is not a good time to try to take swing trades. And the same sideways movement is evident in the daily chart also. Swing traders may wait for clearer direction before taking any trade. We are now looking at QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF using a glance template. In the weekly chart, it is stronger than SPY. There is no trend line resistance line here and we can also see the strength from the copper line going up that is the relative performance line. On a closing basis again for three successive weeks price is not moving much which is also evident from the daily chart. Not the best time to take swing trades we may wait for clearer direction. Dow Jones industrial average using a glance template same picture on a closing basis three weeks are now closing around the same price level daily doesn't have much direction looking from the right hand side not a good time to take swing trades last of the four ETFs that we study Russell 2000 ETF IWM this is the only one that was in solid uptrend it broke out above the pivot resistance level, watermark resistance level last week and made a new all-time high. This week has a indecisive shape candle with both upper and lower tails, very narrow body. Last week on Friday IWM displayed a bearish headwind signal, possible reversal signal, weekly was bullish therefore we were not going to look for any short trade but we could protect our profit using trailing stop. That stop would not be hit. If we had any long position in IWM, we would still be in that trend. Last three days of the week moved sideways. Before that, it fell down. It is in uptrend. It is bullish. Therefore, we are not going to look for any short trade. And it is too close to upper boundary. Therefore, we are not going to look for any long trade either. There is no swing trade opportunity in IWM right now. If we combine the market breadth and the market ETFs analysis, we see that there is no clear trade signal in any of the ETFs and the internals were mixed. Therefore, they are not contradicting, they paint the same neutral indecisive picture. Let's see if the same picture holds true when we study the sectors and industries. Sector performance analysis. Every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar. Blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Together they represent four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line represents the sector went up and any bar going to the left of the zero line represents the sector went down. This week seven sectors went up and four went down. Overall this shows a slightly bullish picture. Utilities and real estate. The red bars are to the right of the zero line so they both gained this week whereas last week they both declined significantly. Therefore, we can see significant flip-flop from negative to positive in these two sectors. Real estate was strong earlier. It dipped one week ago and now strengthened again. 
this kind of pattern may give by the deep opportunity in this sector financials declined last week and it declined again this week i had warned of financials sector in the last market roundup though financials and information technology were the best performers over 12 months period in recent periods they were weakening the weakening is more evident in financials therefore we would do well to be cautious protect our long position using trailing stop and might look for shorts if we have a profitable long position in any stock and the stock is continuing to go up even if the sector or industry is showing weakness we don't need to exit that stock we may just protect profit using trailing stop energy is not worth it this way it was the strongest sector for long time and this way it sharply declined along with the sharp drop in oil USO had a bearish reversal sign at the very top on Q charts paying heed to that reversal sign helped protect profit in the oil stocks energy stock and one could also take some profitable short trades this way analyzing what is happening at the sector level helps us decide what we are going to do with the stocks however that picture is lot more clearer when we move to the industry level at sector level and certainly at the market level up stocks and down stocks tend to neutralize each other however at industry level we have a clearer idea of where the strength and weakness lies best performing industries of this week 10 of the best performers gained by significant percentages between 2.9 to 6.7 percentages three of them are in consumer discretionary and three are in real estate the consumer discretionary industries are specialty stores home improvement retail apparel accessories and luxury goods and the real estate best performers are retail rates healthcare rates hotel and resort rates Several weeks ago, we had identified four real estate stocks using 360 degrees analysis. At that time, they were fundamentally strong. At that time, the industry was strong, and technically, they were at low risk buy points. So, we decided to take long positions in these four stocks. Last week, real estate had dipped. However, these four stocks continue to do well. i believe because they were also fundamentally strong that is the usefulness of using fundamental analysis in swing trades as well among the real estate industries hotel and resort trades is the best performer and the two stocks we took long position on earlier pk and inn were actually in this industry that is again the power of 360 degrees analysis we could identify the strongest stocks in the strongest industry and that industry is continuing to be strong how do we analyze all this we analyze all this from the q edge or q industry scorecard that shows the sector and industry strength using scorecards and heat maps let us look at that now we are looking at q edge real time version of the industry and sector analysis every time we open q edge it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day let's look at the sector panel we can sort on any column by double clicking on that column and double clicking again will reverse the sort order what q edge does is assigns a small score to the worst performing sector and the large score to the best performing sector and applies a heat map magenta to the worst one cyan to the best one color gradient to all the ones in between the result is a scorecard and heat map that instantly tells us which sectors are weak now energy materials 
financials which are strong now utilities real estate information technology equally importantly it shows us which ones are transitioning from weakness to strength telecom and we saw this transition starting to happen in telecom in last market roundup also looking at that we might already start looking for long positions in fundamentally strong stocks that would give us low risk buy opportunities of course using technical charts we can identify it is low risk or not using that we can identify low risk entry opportunities in fundamentally strong stocks which may be good long term investment opportunities as well as short term swing trade opportunities we can see here that energy dropped heavily it was the best performer a while ago with the best score of 11 and now over last 10 days as well as last 5 days it has the worst score it switched rapidly from the best scorer to the worst scorer real estate was weak for a long time then it started to gain strength at that time we could buy those stocks APTS, PKINN etc in the middle they dipped and now they strengthened again that's why I mentioned there may be some buy the dip opportunities in real estate and also utilities right now the analysis that QH does for the sectors it does the same for the industries at a much detail level to get the best performing industries we can click on the five days period double click it five days is the primary period for deciding trade entry both for swing trading as well as long term investment we can see among the 10 best performing industries several are in real estate hotel and resort rates healthcare rates retail rates three of them and hotel and resort rates is the best performer we can click on the drill down button to drill down into the underlying stocks to save time i will use the offline q scorecard in Q scorecard, we can filter for a particular industry stocks. Once it finds the stocks, we can double click on any column to sort it. We are double clicking on the valuation primary column to find out the value stocks. We can see that even now PK and INN are optimally valued we know that instantly from the cyan color coding on the primary valuation column they also pay a nice dividend of 5.4 percent and 4.7 percent respectively respectable dividends let's look at these two stocks using technical charts this is pk it is going up strongly you could identify the long opportunity probably starting from the time it tried to go below the pivot support level watermark support level and sharply reversed with very high activity on the down week and even larger activity in the week immediately following that that created a false downside breakout stopping out weak hands and then went up sharply you could buy the stock right at the bottom or probably after it went up came down and started to go up again the actual entry could be made using daily chart once we were on the stock we could continue to hold it for the longer period at the right edge we can see in the daily chart multiple bearish headwind possible reversal signals have come over the weekly is bullish therefore we are not going to try any short trade neither are we going to exit the long position we can simply apply the q trailing stop to protect our profit 
now the industry strengthened again fundamentally this is still optimally valued therefore there is more upside in this stock no need to exit it right now what about the other stock in this industry inn inn using at a glance template it went up nicely after displaying the possible reversal signal at the very bottom at the right edge it is going up again in last market roundup i mentioned looking at this cyan color that was last friday's close that it is likely to go up further that was based on the cyan color candle which was by that time already above the yellow direction line it was moving somewhat sideways however the weekly candle shape was very bullish the color was bullish also cyan color in the weekly chart we are always watchful of long tail candles if there is a long tail weekly candle then it is more likely that the stock will go up next week we may make the actual entry decision based on daily chart but we are always keeping an eye on the long tail candles in weekly chart as well as in daily chart my prediction based on the bullish shape candle bullish color candle in weekly and the cyan color candle in daily was that price will go up more likely i can never say price will go up for sure but it was more likely and that happened now it is already at the upper boundary line therefore for swing traders we are not going to enter new position now we could enter the long position at the cyan color candle or at the cyan color candle but now it is already near the upper boundary we are not going to initiate a new swing long position right i will not look at the two other real estate stocks that we had long position on you may look at them and see that the q signals on the weekly and daily charts are very nicely telling us what to do from the best performing industries let us now move to the worst performing industries these are the 10 worst performing industries of this week we saw the best performers went up by significant percentages however the worst performers dropped by much more substantial percentages between 3.9 to 11.3 percentages this severe weakness shows a bearish picture at the industry level we have very mixed picture at the broad market level we have neutral picture at sector level it was slightly bullish and from the best and worst performing industries we see there is more thrust to the downside this is confusing time better to stay away from swing trades however using 360 degrees analysis we can always fight trades which has industry strength fundamental strength and technical strength aligned with it and we may be able to find such trades this week also six of the worst performers are in energy sector reflecting the pervasive weakness in this sector they are coal and consumable fuels oil gas and consumable fuels oil and gas exploration and production oil and gas equipment and services energy equipment and services and oil and gas drilling the worst performing energy industry this week is oil and gas drilling and in this industry we have two stocks ESV and RDC they were pumped up they were overvalued already and they had very poor growth both for earnings as well as revenue still the stocks went up a lot and they reached a high level we say pendulum high pretty high level a level where we don't want to initiate new longs and may even start looking for shorts so we had these two stocks that were already overvalued on top of that they were poor growth stocks as well the industry was weakening and they were at pendulum high they both display bearish signs and drop from there you could easily take profitable short trades 
or at minimum protect profit in long positions. Let's go to key wage. Look at the worst performing industries. Look at oil and gas drilling. Drill down to its stocks. Find out ESP and RDC. Look at their fundamentals and then look at their technicals. We can do all of that in a couple of minutes. In QH to find the worst performing industries, we can double click on the 5 days primary period. The worst performers come to the top with bright magenta colors. We can see many of them are in energy sector. Oil and gas drilling is the worst performing energy industry. In real time, we could drill down using the drill down button. To save time, I will use scorecard. Filter for the industry stocks using scorecard. We can double click primary valuation to sort by that. Instantly, these two stocks catch our attention. Very poor valuation and in terms of earnings growth recent quarter as well as recent years very poor growth in terms of revenue growth very poor result again these stocks had everything against them industry was starting to weaken valuation was poor growth was poor very poor dividend as well on top of that ESP had poor earnings quality as well many many things going against them and ripe opportunities for taking short trades let's look at them using technical charts ESV energy stock using at a glance template last week it tried to go up however closed with an upper tail and it reversed precisely from the watermark pivot level this week it tried to go back to the same exact level and reverse from there closed sharply down in the daily chart we can see it touched the watermark pivot level precisely and reverse from there next day we had a bear release signal and a bearish color and shape candle looking at the yellow long tail candle that reversed from the watermark we could already start to look for a short trade and next day as price started to go below in real time chart using our technique of early range breakout we could take a short trade right at that point on friday it opened below the trend line support level we could book partial profit at that time the weekly candle shows it is bearish overall the industry is bearish therefore we don't have any reason to book full profit partial profit can be booked and we may apply trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward valuation continues to be very high Therefore, there is no reason fundamentally, technically or industry-wise to try to book full profit. Whenever we have a chance to let profit run, in my view, it is useful to do that because sometimes we end up getting a large profit like we saw in case of the real estate stocks. Interestingly, here I see in the weekly chart, it displayed the bullish headwind signal it recovered significantly from there price came down to the same level and again went up we have seen this phenomena happening many times if there is a bullish headwind that is able to push price up when price comes down to the same level some more buying may be left we could start looking for long trades at the same price level and catch the stock at a very low level and now using the watermark resistance and the false upside breakout in weekly and daily both we could exit long position and take a swing short interestingly it displayed a bearish 
possible reversal signal at the very top in the weekly chart as well. They work well, not always, but quite often. Therefore, whenever the headwind signal appears, Q traders at minimum protect profit using trailing stop. And if the unambiguous checklist conditions allow, then we also take a reversal trade. Let's look at the other stock in this industry. This is the other stock in the energy industry. Again, interestingly, these two bullish headwinds work pretty well. One for swing trading, one for longer term holding. This bearish headwind could catch the very top. This one didn't work. We would get stopped out if we use that as a basis for taking a long trade. In the recent period, price was going up as oil was going up. Then it came very close to the watermark resistance level. Couldn't quite touch it like it did in the other stock. However, in this case, in the daily chart, there was a bearish headwind possible reversal signal soon followed by a bear release signal day with an upper tail and a bearish shape candle. Looking at that, at minimum, existing long positions would be protected using trailing stop. One might or might not take any short trade, but at least protect their long position using trailing stop. That would be a good idea as it fell further. The weekly chart looks pretty bearish in terms of shape. The industry is very weak, therefore we are not going to take any long trade right now. At the same time, in this case, the daily is at the trend line support level, also near the yellow direction line support level. Therefore, we are not going to initiate any short trade in RDC right now. The optimal short entry in both RDC and the other stock has already passed. Energy sector dropped with oil. However, the worst industry of this week is not in energy. It is computer and electronics retail. Based by large and well-known company, BBY dropped by massive 12.5%. You could protect profit in long position and in fact take a very profitable short trade at the very top. Using again the possible reversal bearish headwind signal on Q charts and it came at the watermark resistance level similar to the reversal from ESV and in this case it was accompanied by bearish headwind as well. Let's look at the industry here we can see from QA it is the worst performer and it was strong earlier gradually it reduced in score and this week it is the worst performer both over five days and ten days period these give us opportunities to take the trades as swing trades and also possibly for holding the shots for longer periods let's look at the stock using technical charts in the weekly chart bby was going up strongly then it pulled back little bit, went up again, went precisely to the watermark resistance level. One week ago, it tried to go above the watermark level but closed below watermark with a long upper tail that was a bearish sign. Around that time, it displayed a bearish headwind in the daily chart. Therefore, we would start to look for short trades or at least protect profit in long positions. There were multiple watermark resistance levels in the daily chart and on this magenta candle, it broke below all of them decisively. The bear release signal had come few days earlier and we had three successive daily candles with long upper tail bearish shape candles therefore we would start to look for 
showing short opportunities at that time. Looking at the watermark resistance last week's failure to close above that, multiple watermark resistances in the daily, multiple upper tail candles in the daily, the existence of the possible reversal signal and then price closing below the watermark level. If we were using real time charts, we could initiate a short maybe somewhere in the middle of this magenta candle. By Friday price fell a lot, we could book partial profit. It has come right at the trend line support both in the daily as well as the weekly chart it is too late to initiate any swing short trade if we initiated a short trade earlier partial profit in my view must be booked because it is at support levels both in daily and weekly partial position could be held as the drop was due to earnings we would know about earnings coming up when we entered the trail it is risky to short a stock just before earnings we might choose an instrument that limits our exposure that could be done using short call verticals put should be very expensive using short call vertical might be the right choice as the stock dropped one would profit both from volatility crash as well as from the delta mark. We now move to the accelerating industries. We study not only the industries that are strong right now but the ones that may be behind and starting to accelerate. They often end up being the best performers in subsequent weeks. We see here the scores over 5 days and scores over 10 days. For all of these industries, scores gained heavily, showing possible acceleration. Four of the ten most accelerating industries is in real estate. You may look for potential long trades in this industry. Industrial rates. Why I pick this is because we will see in the QH heat map, it was nicely transitioning in color. This gave a buy the deep opportunity in STAG stack. The stock has medium valuation, recent quarter earnings growth is pretty good and pays a nice dividend of 5.35%. You could buy the stock on this Wednesday 23rd May as it reverses from long term direction line. In spite of previous week's drop, stack had bullish weekly backdrop color using this insight you could buy the stock as soon as it was starting to go up on daily chart from the swing low let's go to key wage look at this industry drill down to the stocks fundamentals and then technicals and explain how we could initiate a long swing trade in this stock in key wage to find the accelerating industries we sort by the base five days color we can simply double click on the column. The most accelerating industries come to the top. For them, the PACE scores are in cyan color. Industrial rate, this caught my attention because it was magenta earlier, turned cyan in the middle, turned magenta again and now sharply turned to cyan again. This might give a buy the deep opportunity. Therefore, I drill down into the stocks. I use Q scorecard for that to save time. STAG is a stock that is medium valued. We know that from the yellow color on the primary valuation column. It has excellent last quarter earnings growth, 833%. Revenue growth for recent periods is steady. Not fantastic, not in bright green, but green. It's holding on to the revenue and earnings rapidly accelerated in the last quarter. Pays a very nice dividend of 
5.4 percentage so we had something going for the stock in terms of fundamentals let's look at the technical charts in the weekly chart stag had displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal right near the bottom since then it couldn't breach that low went up slowly and then rapidly after that last week it dropped sharply however the weekly candle color was cyan i had explained in earlier market roundups that when that happens that a stock drops for the week but the weekly color is still cyan and it was going up prior to that then in the daily chart the moment it starts to go up we are able to take a long trade because weekly is bullish that opportunity had come on this day as price tried to breach the white direction line but closed above that so it had a strong up move dipped a little bit the candle colors turned bearish red and then magenta after that it turned neutral yellow and then green or cyan that is the point we could take the long trade we could take the long trade either at the close of this candle or near the open of the next candle as the weekly was bullish it would allow us to take a trend following long trade near the value area using a bullish color candle we didn't have to worry about the weekly candle checklist being met it was always cyan as it has hit the upper boundary by friday at least partial profit could be booked the industry is accelerating the weekly is clearly bullish therefore this is again a case where there is no reason to book full profit we should probably let profit run on partial position book partial profit and put trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from now on one Let's now look at the decelerating industries. These tend to be worse performers in subsequent weeks. However, sometimes looking at QH, the heat map, we may identify long opportunities also or possible long opportunities. And that is the case this week. I will explain shortly. Decelerating industries are in various sectors and the heat map of some of these are patchy shifting between cyan magenta cyan again sometimes this may lead to trading setups by anticipating the next move of the flip flop pattern before looking at the possible long trades that we can find from here let's look at the steel industry it has a big drop in score showing deceleration in q scorecard we have 17 steel stocks and all of them fail this week that is widespread weakness not a single one could go up and the average drop was by 3.8 percent pretty large drop indeed one stock ryi dropped by 6.1 percent it was fundamentally overvalued and with poor recent quarter as well as recent years earnings growth. It reversed precisely from daily resistance trend line after displaying bearish reversal signal, the headwind signal. Amazing, isn't it? You could easily protect profit and look for short trade combining the industry fundamental and technical weakness. Let's start with QH again, drill down to the industry, its stocks and then look at fundamentals as well as technicals. To find the decelerating industries, we double click on the page 5 test column again. The most decelerating industries come to the top and their pace scores are in magenta color. Steel is one that was strong earlier then turned magenta tried to gain strength 
so and again in the middle and this way score dropped heavily showing deceleration this time let us drill down to the stocks using real time drill down it is going to Thomson Reuters and trying to retrieve all the steel industry stocks it has found 15 stocks we can click on the calculator button to gather data calculate the vital statistics and many other calculations on these stocks usually we just look at the vital statistics panel that we are seeing now however we can have access to many other calculations the calculation is complete we can go to scorecard refresh the data these tools are color coded the charts as well as industry analyst and fundamental analyst that allows us to respond intuitively we don't have to think much of course for the thinking person the detail are also available we can press right arrow to move to the other panels from vital statistics on all the columns we can double click to sort by that column sorting by five days period performance we see all of them are negative in this case we have 15 stocks average drop was by 3.16 percentage this performance panel also nicely shows how the stocks strengths are changing this hcc is the best performer over many past periods however in recent periods it is not the best performer not the worst performer yet However, when we see a stock transitioning from being the best performer to somewhere in the middle, maybe on the lower side, then that gives us another reason to protect profit and start looking for shorts or at least protect profit. Let's look at the Q scorecard. In Q scorecard, we can sort by industry we can see this stock RYI steel industry instantly from primary valuation we see it was overvalued it is still overvalued and earnings in recent quarter dropped sharply it had 52 percent earnings growth one quarter ago and now year over year quarterly earnings slowed down it went negative by 30 percent one year earnings growth is also negative minus 54 percent earlier it was minus 1.7 then it dropped to minus 0.2 and then had a sharp drop to minus 54 percent overvalued stocks plus earnings growth slowing down not a good stock to hold a long position let's look at its technical charts steel was going up sharply along with that RYI also went up it came to this watermark support level in the weekly chart there were multiple of them then it reversed from there with significant activities on the weekly bars showing that the weekends were stopped out and when it started to go up we could use the daily chart to take long positions one such opportunity might have come at this level when it tried to go up, pull back and give a sand color candle again. The smileys at the bottom of the candles show that they were at pendulum low, a very low price where we could start looking for swing long as well as long term long opportunities. Since then it has gone up. If we took a long trade using this cyan color candle, partial profit could be booked along the line and remaining position could be held. Then it displayed the first possible reversal signal. We could at least protect profit. Then it tried to go to the trend line resistance in daily and precisely to the weekly trend line resistance also. Last week it tried to go above that but closed below the trend line resistance. That is when the bearish headwind had come 
on last Friday price closed at or just below the trend line resistance level. This Tuesday had a bear release signal. Using all those signals, one could take a short trade, swing short trade, and book profit, partial profit by the end of Friday. The industry decelerated. The weekly is pretty bearish in shape. The stock is fundamentally weak. Therefore, we could continue to hold the short position. If we didn't initiate the short trade using the bear release signal, we would not like to initiate it now because the stop loss would be a bit far. If we initiated it using the bear release signal, then partial profit could be booked on Friday and partial position could be held. That is how, again, using the reversal signals, we can take reversal trades pretty well. Coming back to the decelerating industries, Observing the heat map over recent periods, we find two industries that are in decelerating list now. However, they are patchy in heat map, switching between cyan magenta. So, if that switching continues, they may actually give potential buy opportunities. I found two such industries publishing and they stock in that GCI and motorcycle manufacturers. I had discussed. HOG under Davidson in previous market roundup as well. Fundamentals are mixed, however, technicals are looking good at the very low price level. Pendulum low, I think. We'll find it out from the technical chart. The last optimal long entry in GCI, the publishing stock, was using intraday entry technique early range breakout on gap long setup on 7th May as it broke out of daily watermark resistance and now both of them GCI and HOG may give potential long opportunities it's not there yet but we may keep an eye on them both of them pay reasonable dividends let me explain how I identified these opportunities in QA, we saw the most decelerating industries. Among them, publishing and motorcycle manufacturers. We can see for publishing, Cyan, then Magenta, Cyan, and Magenta again. For motorcycle manufacturers, we know there is only one stock in this industry in the USA market, Harley Davidson. It was weak for a long time. Last week we saw it is starting to gain strength. Turn cyan and now magenta again. If this flip flop continues, then next week this may turn cyan again. And that may give us low risk buy opportunities. Let's look at the technical charts of these two stocks. This is GCI, publishing industry stock. Again, it gave a bullish headwind right at the bottom and earlier bullish headwind gave us a profitable swing trade and this bullish headwind gave us profitable swing long trade as well as long term investment opportunity. In recent weeks GCI sharply went up. That happened at this point in the daily chart. I think that was because of earnings result. On this candle, it had broken above the narrow sideways range, broke above the watermark lines, the resistance lines. And it opened with a large gap up. On our Q sonar program, we can identify them in real time as gap opportunities, gap trading opportunities, and using Five minute or 10 minute chart we could take a long trade near the lower end of the candle we could initiate them as a day trade we could book partial profit at the end of the day and then try to hold on to the remaining position with trailing stop so that the entire trade is profitable from then onward as we expect when price 
came to the trend line resistance level it pulled back that is why whenever there is a trend line resistance we are cautious about long positions make sure we book some profit and put trailing stop on the remaining position that is for swing trading now it has pulled back the industry is patchy up down up down now if it goes up the industry goes up and the stock goes up then it may give a cyan color candle in the daily chart that is a bullish signal to take a long trade this is again a case where weekly has dropped but the color has remained cyan those give very nice long opportunity for swing trading the moment the daily starts to go up so this may give a possible long opportunity next week it is showing strength pulling back and next up move is a good low risk entry point for swing trade let's look at harley davidson harley davidson is the only one stock in its industry motorcycle manufacturers and the industry was weak for a very long time we can see that in the stocks decline several weeks ago the weekly candle color stock being magenta turned yellow we had two successive weeks with long lower tails then two weeks ago it went up with a bullish shape as well as bullish color this week it tried to go down but closed mixed it closed down for the week we know that from the activity bar being in red color but it also has a lower tail so it is mixed the color remains cyan therefore next week if it goes up and hopefully it goes above the yellow direction line it will give a very low risk entry opportunity let's look at their fundamentals using q scorecard as we have two stocks i'm not going to filter one by one using scorecard instead i will use q vital in q vital we can analyze the fundamentals of any stock not only us stock any stock in the world the industry analyst q age is available for usa or india at present however we are trying to have a mechanism to generate the industry scorecard for many other countries because i know the symbols i can simply type them hci i am saying hci and typing hic parts of brains are not working together we could enter the root stock find its peers based on certain relationship industry sector country etc or we could just type the symbols click on the calculator to retrieve data and calculate the vital statistics you can go to the vital panel it is going to thomson reuters and retrieving data we have these two stocks now and we can see HCI pays 3.5% dividend and Harley Davidson pays 3.5% dividend, reasonable dividend. In terms of valuation, both are medium. In terms of earnings growth, they both decline in the most recent quarter. In prior quarter, it had significant earnings growth. That's why I mentioned fundamentally they are medium, not best valuation wise growth wise earlier growth was very poor that's why the stocks drop we saw hci jumped after earnings early davidson is slowly starting to go up both of them may give low risk entry opportunities especially if the industries also start to go up next week. those were the regular topics let me look at two more stocks i had identified them using q sonar on meta stock during a recent webinar that was conducted along with meta stock and both were pretty interesting to me we found it in few minutes running q sonar a series of them one advantage of meta stock is that we can run multiple sonars implemented using explorer together for rider i think i ran the sonars at 
pendulum low and reversing and optimal price liquid stocks because i started with a large list large universe of stocks us optionable stocks then i ran the filter for finding liquid stocks first then i tried to find stocks that were at a very low price level pendulum low level and reversing at the same time i didn't want to buy stocks that were already overvalued one way of checking that is using boundary lines so i looked for stocks that are still inside the boundary lines and then i looked for a possible trend following long opportunity so i ran all of these sonars together and in metastock we can sequence them which one to run first which one to run next i will not run it now however that is how i found the stock rider i checked its fundamentals pretty good tracking industry not bad right now so this stock had everything going for it for a long trade then i ran another series of sonars and this time they were aimed at finding a short trade and i ran only two for short opportunity i tried to find stocks that were at pendulum high at very high price level and this time i was not trying to find trend following short i tried to find stocks that were breaking down trend line support and these two techniques gave us two different stocks one was rider rider is an optimal valued stock it gave a bullish headwind possible reversal signal several weeks ago that week also had a long lower tail color was still yellow neutral and this week color turned cyan in the weekly chart in the daily price tried to go below this watermark level gave a bull release signal tried to go up had a series of candles with upper tails those were not confident times to take any long trade on thursday it broke above the watermark support levels i think just below the second level and above the lower support level next week if it continues to go up we already have a sand color candle in weekly if the stock continues to go up and if the industry is also strong then we can switch to one day industry strength to find that out in real time using q wedge or end of day using q score card then i think this may give a low risk entry opportunity if the tracking industry recovers it may end up being a long term investment opportunity as well i will look at riders fundamental shortly but before that let's look at the short opportunity that we identified that was eght8 this is rider that was identified in the webinar using the technique i mentioned at that time it had a support trend line that was broken by this magenta color candle and in the session i observed it had a possible reversal signal in daily don't remember if it was in the weekly also at that time might be there i have to wait for the video recording to come from it to stop however it had a bearish reversal signal in daily it was inside triangle pattern broke below that decisively using a magenta color candle and that is the kind of scans we ran we we are looking for stocks at pendulum high we know that because the reversal signals the headwind as well as the bear rally signals are coming in magenta color not in red anymore so it was at pendulum high and we search for stocks that broke below support trend line and it gave us a very low risk entry opportunity after that it dropped sharply let's look at the fundamentals opposite isn't it our sonar scans were opposite looking for long trade and short trade at the highest level short at the lowest level long and we could also identify stocks that were very nicely valued for the long opportunity and very poorly valued for the short opportunity 
the growths were also aligned. 8 had very poor growth. Isn't this amazing? This stock was at very high level. Poor valuation, poor growth. Reversing with a possible reversal signal. Very nice opportunity to take a short trade. Everything was aligned. And Rider is having improved growth. In a way, when the stock is at very low price level, we don't expect the growth to be fantastic. Valuation is what we can look at. Rider also pays a nice dividend of 3%. We could find these two stocks using mix and match of the sonars. This is very easily done in Metastock, mixing and matching of the sonars. We covered all the usual topics. Let me summarize looking at the market breadth. We see that indices are not moving much for three successive weeks. Internals are mixed. Looking at broad market ETFs, we see that there is no clear direction looking from the right edge inside. At the sector level, we find little more bullishness than bearishness. However, when we look at the best and worst performing industries, we see there is more bearishness than bullishness. This is a mixed picture. Not easy to just close eyes and take swing trades either in long or short directions. However, using 360 degrees analysis, we can always align forces from industry level, fundamentals and technicals to find long and short trades. We could find several of them earlier, 8 for example, a short trade at a very high price level, rider a long opportunity. I think rider opportunity is still there and we can look for potential trades coming up in stocks like Harley Davidson and few others that we found. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for joining. It is always a pleasure for me to come to these sessions. I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.